You have to adjust it. Okay. I try not to move it. Like no, it's, it's okay. Yeah, like yeah, over there, too, yeah. Oh, it is already on. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to focus it. Yeah. Okay. I think focus in the background. Yeah, yeah. There there we you go. have a beautiful yeah, blue background. There we go. Yeah. 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 I can start? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, you, I explain a little bit about the hook. This is the Daiichi hook. This is size 10. Uh, this is what I usually use in, uh, in May uh, and the month of June. As soon as I get July, I get into July, I go to size 12, 14. When I go into, into uh, August, uh, it, it get into uh, uh, size 16. So so don't think I fish with all the big flies. But what I was trying to tell and explain was that I use those really big hooks in very remote places as uh, just after the spawning of the grayling and very early season when actually no, but there was no access uh, to the river before actually. What I discover over the last few years is in all catch and release rivers, you fish smaller than in all the wild rivers where people uh, still take the fish. Uh, because when you when you got fish, they're already taken before. You have to tease them with, with usually with smaller flies. So that, that's, that's what I, I learned over the years. So I don't gonna tell you uh, how to set up the, the thread of the, on the hook because I know somebody who can take about three hours how to hold the rod with casting. So uh, and I know people who can explain why why how to set up the, the thread of, on your hook for, for an hour. I, I don't need that because I, I think I'm not really into uh, the, the slow steps, the steps uh, unless I do tying demonstrations with kids. There are, there are a few ways, um, very important. And that's when I, when I tie the clink camera, I have all the materials I use for clink cameras in this one. And every, every material is selected in one, one back. So when I want to go to a, to a show or whatever, and I know all the people want hands, can you tie me clink camera? Hands, can you show a clink camera? And after a couple of years, I, I got really sick of it. And then I said, I was thinking then at home and when I drive home in the car, I said, well, actually I'm doomed to the fly anyway. I give a shit anymore. So, <laughs> so, so I, I, I just make a map and I can tie any, 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 any uh, clean camera that I, that I want, want. So what I usually do is I collect the materials. So I, 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 what's quite interesting because the first thing I'm going to tie on is, is, is the wing. And um, this is, for example, here you have, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is strands of bullion. And, and actually, uh, this is how they, how they, uh, they solve most of the time, uh, usually on small cards. I, I personally don't like the cards because in the cards, there's a band. And, the, and sometimes it can have a little bit of uh, memory. And then, and then the wing gets a little bit uh, curved, right? I don't want that. 
so so I usually I just uh, uh, have strengths. And, and what, what's very important is to, when you work with polyon is to have a very, very nice, um, I call this tweezer. Tweezer man. This is this tweezer. It's for eyebrows or it's for mascara or out of the eyebrow, what do you call it? Uh, but I use this, you see, because you see here, there's a, there's a little knot here. So I go, I, go, I go and get it out like that, you see, up. And now you see how nice. The, drop, the, if you drop it down a bit. Down? Yeah. Right but where the, where the hook is. Right there? Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. yeah, I cannot see that. Because <laughs> I was yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay. So now you see how nice I now, I now I nice and how soft it gets. And, and uh, so this is, this is strands, um, strands, strands of polyon. Um, and you have it in any color. You, you saw it on, on, the, on the slide before. I get it in every color. Um, um, in England, the Semperfly sell it. And that, there, there are actually two, two sizes. They have a thicker size and a thinner size. And I like the thinner size mm -hmm. for small flies and the thicker size for the big ones. Then there is another, another trick. And this is, this is actually my biggest trick. Uh, from, from the last two years. This is, uh, it's called predator fiber. You know what they use for predator fibers? And, I, and, and they use it on big hooks and, and it absorbs water very well, but it's actually polio. If you put floatant on it, you don't get your big predator fly up on the, on the water. But what I like about it, it it's, it's, it's all straight. And you can mix it in color. Look at this. This I mixed here five colors. And this color is exactly the same color as the wing of Danica. And you saw when the Danica was in my fly box. Yeah. That's how I figured it out. Because I always went to Denmark. I wanted to do some research on the Danica. But we only had a week. And then we were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then once you had all Danicas all over, but the fish were not ready to take it. And, and, and now we retired, you know, also retired so we can do it together. And then we could follow the mayflies five weeks in a row. And, and they start to hatch. I don't know if they say, I think it's the same in England also. They start, they start to hatch close to the mouth of the river where it runs into the, into the sea or the ocean. And then it went upstream. You know, so you can follow the, the, the hatch of the Danica upstream to the spring. And, and that's why you can, you can really do study the bond. That's what I did. And sometimes the, the hatches were so plentiful that I, you put, just put your fly boxes there and they were into it. <clears throat> and, and they got on your wall, they got on your face. And I have a beautiful picture for me and Leon. Our faces and our hats were completely covered by, by mayflies. Um, um, uh, but this is, this is a really good material. Well, and then there are two ways I tie, I tie in the, the, the clink arm. Actually, there are several ways. I, I, it's all in the book. Um, and uh, uh, you, you can do it uh, in, 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 uh, in, in the way I do it in the 80s. When I put all the poly on, on the hook shank and go over it and make a tapered body. So, that's one way. I can, I can show that later. Um, you can you can go also the 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 the, the, the way that I use for small uh, clink hammer bodies, and um, and then then you can actually tie it on the knee like this, and then you just go in front and you just go in the back, and then you go a few times like this, and. Um, what I discover is that this is uh, actually very hard to twist it later on. So it, while it's, it, it's, it, it looks less solid as, as the other technique, this actually is quite, quite a bit better. Right? And then what I do usually is I, I already got a little bit uh, the size of the wing and then I 
I use my tweezer a little bit. So, so okay, this is okay. This is a good size for for this hook. So it's actually perfect. Then I take my uh, my my very 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 light gun or ginger. Some some people call it ginger. Now, then I, I told you about the hackle fibers. Um, a lot of people they use they use they they use all those 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 here for small flies, right? And when you see my capes, you see all this 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 is still on, and all the big 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 feathers, the the, the one on top here, I use for the clink counters. So I, I actually use the, the feathers nobody used because they all use this, right? Uh, because I don't want small, small hackle fibers. So then I, I just put up the web like this. Uh, if you cannot see, just correct me. So because I want, want you to get a good impression. So I then get just tie the same beside the wing. And then I secured a little bit on the hook set. So it's, it, 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 it it doesn't come off anyway, but but uh, it's just the way I do. But now I have I can I can tie a very slim slim body. So what what I use I like to use is is silk, um, real pure silk as ribbon because it's a dry fly. And anybody has an idea why I sh I should use silk as a ribbon? Change the same color. Exactly. It's very, very, very color uh, durable. And if it gets wet a hundred times, it's still the same color. That's why I use this. And if you use uh, wool tins, wire, or silver wire, or copper, it all changes color. And and I want exactly, I want this color. This is just finish, 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 finish orange. And, 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 and this color is really good because a lot of mayflies, they have this, uh, this little orange uh, segmentation, you know? And, and uh, you will see it when I'm done. So I, I tie the, 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 the silk, silk thread in and, and silk is quite durable too. The only problem is sometimes you see uh, the, it, you, you destroy it and you destroy it only with it, with the with your tweezers to get the the the, the fly out of his mm -hmm. mouth, and sometimes when you get more trout, then trout can damage it or salmon can damage it. Right? So then, uh, what I think is the best of the best uh, for, for this this fly is 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 a natural black color. This yeah, it's not perfectly black, but it's a natural black. One of the best feathers you can find is the, the, the black feather of a peacock wing. Uh, but that, that, that's, that's really, really, really perfect. And I like that very much because I like natural black color. I don't, there, there's only a few black, really black flies, like a hot one is pitch black, right? Some ants are pitch black. So, so then, then I re really use black color, but, but most, most is, is, uh, is, is a little bit more, a natural color like this, and and if you if you have a, an insect and you have a little loop with you, tiny little loop, and you look at the body, and and then you actually notice that uh, every insect body is not just a solid color; it's a mixture of them, and that's why I like this this merge colors of these blended colors from Flyrite so much. If you have the forty six colors of Flyrite. You can imitate everything. Every, every, ins, any, or what's it? Karen, every or any insect, any, any, insect. any insects in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a good corrector. She helped me a lot with my name. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's, that's really, really, really good. And, and a lot of people don't understand that. There's, there's one, one thing that a lot of people forget. And that's when you're using dubbings for, for to imitate any dry fly, any dry fly, is that the fly get wet in the water. So when you use a particular color of dubbing, 
you have to know what you're doing by, by thinking wet. Because the turbine you're using gets wet in the water. So if you use a, a too bright color, it's not the same color. Sometimes you're lucky and you can, it's the difference between a male and female, but often it, the color is not accurate anymore. And then, then, it, then it can, uh, the fly, you saw the parachute fly, you saw the imitation of the real insect. I, I show you uh, holding the scissor or in the, in, in the tweezer. And that was exact, that color dubbing was wet. And that's how I try to copy it, okay. The, how I solved that problem is I use a booklet called the Borg Color System. I described it also in the book. And it's, it's, it's designed by Gary Borg. We all know Gary Borg. You know, he's a biolog biologist from biologist. America. He wrote quite a few books. And he was deeply involved with, with, uh, with, with the development of fly ride colors. From, from, from the company Flyride in the US. I was involved with Flyride and a few other, other fly tires were involved. And, and, and so to think wet was to put the wet insects on, on, the, on the color of the, the, the color, what was it, the shards in it? The color, the, there were little, little shards in it and you put your insect on that so you have the wet color. And then, then you, you make your dubbing. So you have to dub it as a, as a body and drop it in the water and see if the color is still the same. If you don't do it, then you have the wrong color. But I, I mixed colors and then I make my own color charts and said, okay, this color, this color, this color, and that makes that color. And that, that's, that's a process that takes quite a few years. So, but with this, this uh, feather, uh, you know, I, I made that in, 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 in Labrador when I wanted to imitate one insect, uh, one insect is in the book also. And, and I, I made it. And the only thing I had was a bald eagle feather. And that was, that was the perfect call. And then I rip it with, with this, uh, with this uh, uh, silk. With pure silk. And then the, 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 the imitation was perfect. And, and, and Ina and I were fishing there for brook trout, and we wanted our trophy brook trout, and we all got the trophy brook trout, uh, and everybody got it with streamers, and we got it with dry fly clinks in that imitation, and that's why this this imitation gets so popular. So I got tried to test it uh, in the mayfly heads and and, 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 and other, other situations. So I cut off just a few feathers like this. I tie it in on the hook shank. Because I wanted to have a very slim body. And, and with fly right, I, I want the opposite. I want to have more the caddis mm. imitation. So I make a thick body. So, so then I, I wrap this around. And, and if, you, if you get close and, and when you finished and you get look at it closely, you see how beautiful the, this uh, these fibers go from from the feather, and uh, and that's really really uh, the idea behind it. Because then it, it's more like a, a realistic body. So I, I tied it in here and there. It's this hard to see because I have to hold it with my hand, right? But I, I think you can see it, right? Okay. So then I, I, uh, I wrap it, just set it, tied it up with my iron thread, and then I can cut away the fibers. Yep. Yep. And now what actually make, make the real body is, is wrapping the silk thread, but I do that in opposite in opposite direction. So it, it makes actually the body a lot stronger because it's just a fiber. And then, and then you see a beautiful uh, segmentation. And if you use this, this uh, vintage orange uh, pure silk and you use it with 
dark, blue dun colors and dark. You, you, it works so well. I don't know why. Uh, and then I said, well, now I know why in the past they had this orange and partridge or partridge and orange. I think the official name is orange and partridge. The partridge and orange. Partridge and orange. Yeah. Because I, I saw a lot of uh, old patterns in, in, in the first uh, Sylvester Lister and all those books. They were they call it orange and partridge or whatever. So so but that's that's something for the experts. I'm not an expert. Okay, so now now you see quite I have quite a lot of space for my uh, for my thorax. And what I want is even this, how slim the body is, I want I want a really I want a really uh, thick thorax. Let me see if I can find one. Good one. Okay, this this is a good one. My friend. So I'll take this one. And and then I take three or four uh, fibers of of peacock. Uh, for me, it's a serious problem, and I use synthetic peacock from Sample Fly uh, when I travel by plane nowadays. The problem is the green uh, peacock. There's a blue peacock that's 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 uh, all over the world, but there's also a green peacock. But but the tail feathers are exactly the same. So now, imagine you coming to America or one of the silly idiot. He had a bad night, and he's he has his power at the customs at an airport, and then he said, "Well." Sir, you have illegal stuff with you. This is a this is a green pickup. It's 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 uh, protected because it's uh, on the uh, it's the, uh, yeah on the lights on the, on the list. Um, well, I said no. It's blue pickup. Well, no, it's green pickup. No, he said it's it's uh, it's blue pickup. No, it's green pickup. You have to prove it. It's it's blue pickup. Mm -hmm. You can. <laughs> So you always lose. Yeah. So I, I don't want any discussions anymore at, at customs. I, I remember once Oliver Atwas went to Sweden, and this was this was very rare because Holland airports are so shitty with the security. <laughs> and, and and but what happened was he forgot a cape, complete cape of of, of partridge, and then a friend of him came to to the airfield and he gave it to him. He put it in his hand luggage. So we had a complete cape of a partridge in his hand luggage. Now, now the hand luggage is always checked. So he was there. He went through the security. Okay, sir, what's it? Oh, it's partridge. But, 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 but he, oh, but, but Oliver didn't know partridge is very secured in our country. It's, it's, it's prohibited to have, right? So, so they, they hold him for twenty four hours, and he missed his first day. <laughs> On, on, on the Swedish show, just for part of skin. So, so everybody was thinking, well, it's not a problem, it's a serious problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm involved with, with Samplefly so much, because they saved me a lot of problems at, at airfields with the customs, because you cannot win with these bureaucrats, and, 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 and it's a really pain in the ass in the future, I'm sure about that. You, you have really serious problems with those. And then you think, oh, the Holland is no problem. It, it will, you know. So I, what I do when I get, I get special feathers, I find them in, in North America. I send them by post. It's easier to just to avoid the problems at the customs because because sometimes you had a very friendly guy. I, I remember I went to England. It was in the eighties, and and I that time you could have your pies in your hand luggage, no problem at all. And then they were, and then and then there was the first one, and then there was another one coming, and then they all were discussing about my fly. So I had the best the best trip going to customs ever, because because some were fly fishermen, and so I gave away a few flies, so everybody was happy. So so that were different times, but but the way you have when you have yeah, a guy who didn't sleep very well, then then you have a you have a problem. And some people just like it. Uh, I, re I remember my first trip to GFK when I arrived 
And I was so lucky. I had my military passport with me because I could get in another lane because there was one, one little guy and he was shouting like we, we arrived in Auschwitz. Unbelievable shout. I, I couldn't believe it because that was the only thing he felt power, I guess, uh, around people. And it was so sad. I, I feel really sorry for this guy. And, and, but, but the other guys, it took them four hours to go to customs and I was done in five minutes. That was the benefit of having a, a, a military passport at that time. But I was in the 80s. So now you see, I tied off, I tie off my flower. You see how beautiful the thorax is? Yeah, it's really good. The colors are not that well, nice, but it's looking good here. Then what I usually do is I I uh, I have this little tube. In the tube is a varnish applicator. And then it's very important. This is one of my, my most important tools for the clink on. So I, I put a little bit in here. So for the luck, you be fine. Okay. So put it on again. Now. Hey, still can't find it. In. Okay, now now I turn the turn the the, the, the fly in the vise, so so the wing is horizontal like this, and then I grab my spider web. If if somebody wants to see how thin it is, and and there's people who claim they have the thinnest thread in the world, many many times. But when I compare this 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 is really the thinnest. It's it's dirt thirty denier. 30. 30. See? Up, up a bit. By the, by the hook. That's it. You see it? Danville, yeah. It's a mirror. Okay. I, I do it like this then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but this, this is really thin. And, and you see, this is just an old, an old, ordinary bobbing. And I, I love it. Sometimes I even, when I have a walk to the toilet, I put it in my bed, but I don't want that they steal this one because it goes so smooth. And see, you see the secret of, of this thread um, is it's not just one winding, but it's the, it's the number of windings and it makes it really strong. So now I make a base, a base for the, for the, for the hacker to wrap around. And when I showed this thread to Oliver Atlas, he got completely nuts. Yeah, he said, well, this is the thread I was searching for all my life because now I can find tie my little midges. Yeah. And he, he tied, he said, that, that's what actually, when he started to tie his, his, his tiny little realistic nymphs because this, this thread is so wonderful. Uh, and there was another guy, unfortunately in England, he ordered 3000 spools in my name. I think his, his, his business was done very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crazy. But anyway, so, okay. Now, now you see, uh, because I, I, I try to teach, uh, especially the kids, when I do parachute slides, because you, when you think kids cannot do it, you, you are absolutely wrong. When I have a one hour workshop with kids, everybody, every one of them, they, they're able to, to tie a clink hammer at the end of the demonstration. When, when you think a kid cannot tie a salmon fly, they all tie a salmon fly within an hour with, with my, my presentation. And, and, and that's because the kids do what you, tell, what you tell them to do. You know, what I usually do is that I do steps and then I show that then around the table, I do small classes like six. I do a high five and tell them what to do. They go back to the tables. I check, 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 go back and I show it again, do a high five, blah, blah, blah. And they, <laughs> they, they love it. Mm -hmm. And I love to do it with, with the kids. And, and they're really much more capable, capable, capable. To, yeah, to tie what we think they can. And, and so I, I, I said, I always, okay, I do 12 here because I don't want to do uh, younger kids. And then I, I turned to 10 
And finally, I turned to A. And then in Labrador, I must say, I had help from beautiful uh, uh, students from, from university in America and in, 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 uh, in Canada. They joined a special project for, for helping uh, keep the kids busy in, in, in summertime. Uh, and so I, I teach them what 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 to what to watch on. on uh, I learn them actually fly tying in three evenings or so, and then they help me out with the kids. And then I even had kids with six years old, mm -hmm. and they tie salmon fly. They're herring, but it's a salmon fly, right? Okay, so now I have my base, and then and then the hackle. I I I tie, I want to have the hackle with the shiny the sunny side or the sh shining side. Underneath, so so the shiny side has to be on on the bottom. Why is that? Because that's the, that's the side of the feather. It's more, most protected. I say, is that important for clink ups? No, it's not important. For clink but if you tie very delicate uh, horseshoe flies, very small ones, size sixteen, then it's and they're very thin. They all float on the hackle. The clink up will float on the wing, but but. Parachute flies actually float on the hackle and the tail of like that. And then it's it's more it's, it's really it works really good when, when when you have the best side of the feather underneath. So so then I start on top of the of the of the of my windings and I do every, every turn underneath underneath the other one. And because the quill is getting thinner and thinner, it, it, it goes very, very smooth. Now and now What's important is how many windings that you do is, and that I learned, uh, I learned to, I, I knew how to do it, but I didn't know how to explain it. And Wayne Llewellyn, a very good friend of mine in the US, he explained me uh, why and how, and I, and, I, and I wrote it in the book. And, and so what I do is I turn, I turn, I turn, and everything goes follow it smooth, smooth, and then suddenly the hack of fibers point another direction. And then I know, okay, I'm a little too far and I go a little back and okay, now it's okay. I see this, still okay. Okay, now they start to turn. And now I just just wrap the, the spider web over the hacker tip. I just cut away the hacker tip. And then I just tie it off with my whip finish. See? Uh, and that you cannot do with ordinary tying trap because you will, all the hacker fibers go underneath and the spider web is nylon. So it goes smoothly between them and, and no hacker fiber go underneath. Now, then I cut off the spider web. And another important step is, again, with my varnish applicator. So I go to this way. And then I spin this into the into the hackle and into the thorax. So that's why I'm not afraid the torch coming off and 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 uh, the hackle get loose. And and you saw the completely damaged uh, clink hammer, but that the parachute hackle was still intact. Mm -hmm. And that's because I do this. So this is how I make my my parachute flies very durable. Um, the reason I, I, I needed this technique because I was fishing for grayling and I loved fishing for grayling. And then I got one trout and the parachute came out. So I said, well, I, I don't, and then I got another trout, the parachute came out. And, and so finally I had in, in my box all parachute flies without where, where the hackle was loose. So, I, and that's why I, I said, okay, now I want to have a technique. So I was thinking quite a few months that, that the hackle cannot get off or not get off easily. Mm -hmm. And I also want to have a technique that I can repair my, my parachute flies. And that I explained in my book also, because that's never ever done how to repair a fly. And, and I think with parachute flies, it's perfect to, to, to repair them, right? Because I, I use the same fly um, in, in, in the book that I typed the step before. So, Okay, so then I take I take uh, the fly out, and then I, I tie off all the hackle fibers 
they're pointing downwards. And that, that makes it a little bit nicer. And then, and then the clean camera is ready, you see? And that's it, that is the one, it's on the cover. It's not good here. You see, that's it. Olivia, it's for you. Come and get it. <laughs> I, I think that's alas, that's really all we've got time for. But um, I, we could perhaps have three questions. If, if, yeah, yeah, uh, then we can do. We can do a particular question. But we, uh, like a Q 